Good morning, gamers. This is Mark with your Ohio Hammer R&R for September 9th, 2012. Now, to start things off, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a French company, Anacron Miniatures, and their Card Mage figure. Now, the Card Mage is a, a leather armor-clad gentleman with... Uh, two swords, a face mask, as well as a, a, a longer draping hood, like a single-tailed jester's hood, perhaps, with a playing card held between his pointer and middle finger. Now, normally when I come to you guys and say, hey, there's this alternative miniature, I have some idea of what I think would how this figure would fit with the Anacron card mage I really don't but it is such a a cool looking figure I just wanted to go ahead and bring it to you guys' attention now this is a French company the website is completely in French and I did not see in the little bit of looking around I did what the price point or street date on this gentleman was so, if you're interested, go ahead and take a search for Anacron Miniatures Studio, A-N-A-K-R-O-N, and see if you can, uh, you know, look into the card mage. Now, next up, we have Chapter House Studio releasing another conversion kit for a GW hole, if you will. We all know that Chapter House and GW have been in a long-going uh, legal dispute. And I don't know if the strike kit for the Tyranid Warrior is is starting to say that maybe the uh, lawsuit is wrapping up. But Chapter House is giving us the strike kit for the fast attack Tyranid Warrior. This will be you know two wings, two feet, and then uh, a head option for $12. Next up, continuing on with alternative miniatures, Dark Art Studios has released their version of the Ogre Gore Master. This is very much meant to be a, a, a slaughter master or a butcher. I mean, it has no gut plate. A lot of fat rolls. I mean, they did fairly well with the the body, but there's not a lot of detail on them. And there is a chain with a couple hooks and a skull, and there are some lesions across his chest. But there are some small things that I guess I'm not quite sold on with this. It's fairly obvious there are two heads. It's fairly obvious how the head joins, where the necks have a lot of fat rolls. There are two horror heads that are sold separately, one having this uh, pyramidal helmet, and then the other being kind of, I guess, more of a decayed look. I mean, I didn't get a really good picture of it to show or even really see, but this gentleman will clock in at 18 pounds British. There are nine different weapon options for the hand stubs, and again, the horror heads are available separately. Moving on, Fantaside is the Rick Priestley, Alessio Cavatore, uh, Andy Chambers project that I told you about in the Kickstarter half you know, a couple weeks. Now they're coming out with a poll to decide what the next main faction that they should release would be. Now they've got you know basically your bugs, your a frog faction. A faction based on Alice in Wonderland, walking mushrooms, and and then Amazons. Now the Amazons they're showing are the Shadow Forge models, so they're a lot more detailed and you know fleshed out and painted than the concept pictures for the others. But what they're doing again is running a poll on their website, aliendungeon.blogspot.de, to decide which faction they should concentrate on next. I did not check and see what the 
cutoff data this was. So it's worth a look if you are interested in Fantaside to uh, just check this out and make a vote. Now next up, Forge World has released the Elemental Incartation of Fire. I don't know that I have a lot good to say about this model. I do like the demonic head, but just the human body just doesn't quite sit right with me. And I guess I look at it and think it's got to be a painter's nightmare trying to paint all the flames on the upper part of the figure. Being Forge World, he is 68 pounds, and I'm sure that the rules for him are in Monsters Arcana. Geek Nation Tours would like to take a moment and let us all know that Adepticon is coming. April 18th through the 21st of 2013. So Terrace has went ahead and started to put out details of the Geek Nation Tours Adepticon Tour Package. The tour will start April the 17th on Wednesday and end Monday the 22nd. It's uh, $999 for double occupancy, $1,330 for single. As usual, Terrace has reached an arrangement with the gentleman of Adepticon to get your events registered before the card opens. So if you were thinking about going to Gen Con and haven't started to look at the hotel and the travel and whatnot, it might be worth it to check out Geek Nation Tours and just see what Terrace can put together for you. Moving into high-tech miniatures. High-tech miniatures gives us a, a figure that a lot of gamers have talked about in the 40k forums previously. The female space marine. So what they've given us is the Black Widow's female Grand Commander. This is very, very space marine. I mean, in fact, it'd be hard to tell that it's a female space marine until you look at the long hair coming out the back. I mean, it is highly detailed, as you'd expect from a high-tech miniature. And I don't know then if this will be the first in a line of the Black Widows. This commander will go ahead and set you back uh, 16 and a half euros. So if you're interested in you know, a spidery themed space marine chapter, because she does have the ornate uh, pauldrons and shoulder pads, it might be worth taking a look at high tech and see what, uh, what you think of this miniature. Moving on, MicroArt Studios has went ahead and put out a couple new versions of its shale bases and its ruins bases for both the square basers and the round basers. So be sure to check out uh, MicroArt and see if those bases are something you can use. Cyborg Miniatures has continued to ride the Dark Angel wave. The first thing we get is a work in progress of the sci-fi lion knight motorcycle. In some ways, I think it's a bit over top. I mean, it's got this giant lion where the, the windshield would be. It's a very dark angel lust. The robe, I mean, lions everywhere. I mean, again, Cyborg continues to put out amazing looking sculpts, even if they do seem sometimes a bit over the top. And then... They went ahead and showed off preview picks for basically a Land Raider. The side doors on the Land Raider, uh, you know, the doors, the the little front hatch area, and then a couple days later, they actually came out with the the master, so that we could actually see it. Cyborg does beautiful work. This is. Very, very ornate Dark Angel. If you have any kind of an angel theme, a death angel theme, holy moly guys, <laughs> this is just perfect for you know, making that just extra special Land Raider. Now the kit does come in at 19 and a quarter euros, but I mean again, the amount of detail that Cyborg puts into some of these things is just amazing. Now, the last normal 
non-Kickstarter project I found was by Urban War. Now, they're currently running a, a Facebook special like us on Facebook, and you're entered to win one of three Neo-isk starter strike teams. Six miniatures, two dice. The Neo-isk ha- have a very Romanesque feel, but Again, with most alternative normal grunts, they might make a really cool looking guard style army. So I just wanted to kind of point that out and see if you know, Urban War Strike Team was anything that, uh, that you guys might be interested in. Now, one piece of business news Voodoo Works, they, I know they make some bases among some other things have been acquired or merged into Secret Weapon Miniatures. So the Secret Weapon brand has uh, grown yet again. And, you know, the lines they're offering will grow as they uh, start bringing the Voodoo Works, you know, baseline into, uh, into their catalog. Moving into the insanity that is Kickstarter. Starting off with Mantic Games and Dreadball. Uh, almost $200,000 in. To the point where the next stretch goal for these guys is the Season 2 or the expansion for Dreadball. Adding four new races. And I believe two of them have not actually been seen at all in the Warpath universe. So if you have any interest in a uh, a futuristic sports game, check out Dreadball. Fantaside, which I talked a little bit earlier with the multiple new uh, starters, is now funded. They do have about $13,300 in, and this project will end on September 11th. But Fantaside is a go. Dreamforged Leviathan has continued its monumental growth. They're almost in at $105,000. So they've just added a second uh, mis- uh, minigun to the Leviathan project, which would be the, I believe, the left handed minigun. And their next stretch goal, I believe, will start to add some variety and a command option to their, uh, their stormtroopers. So. Dreamforge does have another six days to go on this project. Wonderful project. Ken and I have already backed it. You know, big thumbs up from second founding to uh, the guys at Dreamforge. Then we get into Relic Knights. Now, I guess I'm having a hard time talking about this one this week because by the time I'm recording and this will put you out, it's on, it'll be over. So, they went ahead and filled in all the Super Dungeon Explorer miniatures for all the Relic Knights in the starter sets. They've added a, a new set of purchasable um, minions, as well as two new boss models. I mean, last night, uh, Soda Pop went ahead and said... That uh, the second boss model would be the last stretch goal. And they didn't think that we would get there. And I believe that one was at uh, 750000 780000 Woke up this morning and we had smashed that goal. So they had to come out with uh, another couple miniatures. And at that time there were seven hours left. And by four hours left, we had made another... $50,000 or so. So, guys, when you're looking at Kickstarter, realize that the last day can just be pure insanity. At this time, Relic Night should be over. Hopefully, they've made their $888,888 stretch goal, which would be a second plushie. And the final set of Kickstarters I wanted just to touch on which I didn't touch on last week, and I apologize. Wreckage is funded. 
at just under $10,000 and is heavily pushing its next stretch goal, which will be a second additional mini to anyone, I think, who buys the uh, the book. And Wreckage will end on September 16th. So, guys, that will just about wrap it up for another Ohio Hammer R&R, and I will see you next Sunday.